but you can see just how easy that is to break. I've seen the stories online of carbon bars snapping. Probably the most memorable is when Van der Poel's bar was flapping in the wind. Not ideal. So I took a trip to Carbon Bike Repair UK to speak to Rob Granville, the owner, about all things carbon fibre handlebars. We also cut a pair in half. Very insightful. It's a bit, it's obviously a bit more complicated than just saying carbon bars are good or carbon bars are bad. You can see the different shapes. You've got the round bars, you've got the flat aero bar, and then you've got the, the TT style bars. And they all um, apply pressures from the rider weight in different ways. Uh, the a round tube, if you know anything about geometry, is the strongest point. Okay. But on bars, if you were to make them, the tube perfectly round, they would, to be completely safe, they'd have to be quite, the diameters would have to be quite big uh, to do two things. Um, uh, it, the, the flexibility, reduced flexibility, and the amount of, of of, of weight applied to them during an impact uh, would be why you'd have to make them s bigger than, than this. With the, ge with the current geometry of road bikes, with the stems uh, and the way they fit on and the bar and the clamps and everything, they converted, they converted carbon fiber from the old style of al alloy yeah. bars. Same with wheels, rim brake wheels. All they could do is just replace the materials, and sometimes they're not as good. For as far as round bars are concerned, I would probably still err on the side of caution when it comes to getting carbon compared to to alloy because there's really not that much difference in weight. And if that if there is much difference in weight, I probably wouldn't want to use them. Okay. And the issue really is that um, the bar itself is designed on the premise that it was when it was aluminium, which means it could it could buckle. If, if you hit a pothole here, you, it would break. So there's not a lot of material on this. Whereas with this, there's quite a lot more material on this shape. And this is comparable in terms of weight, probably the same weight, if not slightly lighter. There's quite a big difference there, right? The, the joy of working with carbon fiber and things like bars is just the ability to be able to produce as many shapes as you want for aerodynamics, for ergonomics, comfort, ride, whatever you want. There's a lot more options available in mold making something than extruding aluminium bar. One of the other things, if you saw the video from CBR that I had shown you earlier about the corroded yeah. bars, <laughs> which are just as dangerous, and because they're hidden by the bar tape, you don't necessarily see what's underneath there. But, um, Drinks, isotonic drinks, sweat can erode these things horrendously. So it's very dangerous. What's dangerous about carbon bars is where you want to look after you've felt a crack going and whether you can keep them or not. Anything past this part of the, of the hand, from this part down, is, is okay if it cracked. Meaning that you probably, you still have other options to ride where the clamp, the shifters are clamped onto. Sometimes if it breaks there, you need to take the, the shifter off to see if there's any fracturing underneath and you will see it. The worst place for a bar, a round bar to break or any bars to break is close to the stem in this area. Why? Because all your weight, your, the pressures that you're applying, the twist is all coming to a head on, on this junction here. So the worst crack being right at the stem clamp area and down to this reduction here, which is designed for bar tape. Again, aerodynamics, you have to make the center smaller, the diameter smaller, so you can put double layer bar tape if you want more comfort. So the issue there is really this part. We don't repair round tubes, there just isn't enough material. And we certainly wouldn't repair any bars in this area here. Just, or, get, just get, in just get, yeah, or in this area here, or in this area here. Quite often you get road rash on these bits, very expensive bars, and that counts for these two. Um, those are fine, we can repair them, no problem. But generally it's not economical anyway to get them repaired. Here's an example of a pair of bars is why we have it and the owner doesn't have it back, is because it's fractured at a very critical area mm. on the frame, on the, on the bar. So I mean, you know, you imagine you're, 
you're doing that why would you why would you risk it because you have you have no chance once that once they go just get rid of them with with larger tubes like this it's a lot easier to apply carbon to areas like cracks might be from a clamp or something we can easily repair those it's a lot more material area for us to work with so in certain cases we might look at those to do those in, in, in repair particularly if you can't find those bars anymore uh, TT bikes again same thing the same thing applies any fracturing in these areas or in these junction points we don't really want to go near them so generally the, the general thought is just replace your bars same and the same goes for C-tubes round C-tubes we wouldn't go near them teardrop tear-shaped uh, mm. tear C-tubes are different there's a lot more material a lot more purchase for us to work on a lot safer repairs on those and there are cases where uh, bikes that are aero bikes you can't find those parts anymore. Yes. so do come and ask and the price difference to be fair and about the time you finish doing a repair a good repair and painting it finishing it off is not much different to a mass produced uh, supply of these bars but quite often it comes down to the amount of stock available but you can see just how easy that is to break yeah. yeah. Not great. Very thin. It's kind of gone on where the change is. Exactly. Where the bar tape. This is the danger of, of having wall thickness changes. This is why repairs must be the same wall thickness all the way around. Because this is what happens. Imagine this is a repair. This is actually a good example. Mm. Imagine this is a repair patch that you put on your own bike suddenly you've got a real issue here where this is quite strong but as soon as you 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 stick it right next to a really thick section it breaks right there so that consistency of wall thickness is vital. critical classic case of delamination yeah that's what so many people talk about but you can't really see until you go through a fracture. Can you see all these lines here? This is separate material, see? Okay. There's no strength in that. Strength in composites is based on we're all together in this, in a marching squad. Yeah. It's like a like a like a like a group of soldiers all lined up doing exactly the same thing. When you composite composite is held together all those properties are multiplied by the many layers you put together and then it's bonded together held together by force from the matrix if you split the matrix up it's not the carbon that necessarily breaks up the, the delamination takes place from the matrix splitting there's the matrix splitting and that's why you could wiggle this this around because it's just no power in that mm. nothing whereas this side is solid you can't get in there Okay, this is something that you really have to do if you're concerned about the integrity of your bars. It's just unfortunately there's no other way, but you've got to take the tape off. It'll mask the sounds. It'll it'll mask movement to some degree if it's slight, and slowly the carbon will creep underneath, creeping basically like a windshield crack. Mm. And you end up with uh, with a much bigger problem when you do hit something. So have a good look around. Look at these, as you pointed out, Jordan. This is um, these joints here are always going to be where wall thicknesses change. In fact, we should cut this one up. Yeah, let's do a wall thickness check. This, this is good composite practice. Um, difficult to show you, but if you look at the if you look at the the step, yeah, you'd think it would be a step down. This would be thick. This would be thin, oh, yeah. and that would have concerned me where that crack was. But what it is is just a step. And this is what makes carbon carbon manufacturing so impressive. Is what we have here is what's called an undercut. An undercut means if it was a solid inner core that would help create the shape like this, you would not have been able to 
pull the mold out because it would, it would be stuck by this wall. But because it's a bladder like material, not dissimilar to this plastic, it um, when the pressure is taken out, that just slides out. So you 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 get these most incredibly uh, dynamic shapes and they all conform into the same requirement which is wall thickness consistency. If you enjoyed this video check out this video where Rob and I cut up a premium specialized frame and had a good look inside. Very interesting indeed. A big thank you to Rob at Carbon Bike Repair UK for his time and knowledge. I've added a link to the description where you will find his website. I will see you in the next one.